I'm very pleased that our, uh, my good friend, our good friend, uh, our former congresswoman, Enid Mickelson, is on the line with us and actually waiting to get on a plane back in Cleveland. Enid, you've been very flexible with us, worked very hard to meet our <laughs> schedule. Thank you so much. No, you're, you're welcome. I know that there's, the shootings in Orlando consumed all of us, so... I'm happy to do this. I'm just sorry I've got to get on the plane in about 10 minutes. No problem. You just give me a heads up if uh, you need to run at any point. And, you know, we talked uh, not all that long ago when you were on the selection committee and you and others decided that the conventions would be moved up a little bit and that we would be meeting in Cleveland where you are right now. And now the headline is ex-Congresswoman Enid Mickelson to head the GOP Rules Committee at convention. I don't know whether to congratulate you on this one or not, Enid. (laughs) Holy cow, what? What a a hot uh, position. A a lot of people have been saying, do I congratulate you or give you condolences? Let's wait and see how it turns out. But, no, I I, I feel very grateful that Brian Priebus, the chairman of the RNC, trusts me enough um, to put me in this position because the the important point at, at, at this juncture is that this process has to be fair. I mean, there, there are a lot of people who want a lot of different things. Um, we've gone through our process so far, so far. We've adhered to it. You know, now that we're in the home stretch, we've got to make sure that people feel that the process has gone forward in a fair and impartial manner. So that's what my job is in the coming weeks. You know, somebody asked me this morning out of the newsroom, you know, what do you, what do you think of the choice? I said, I think it's a great one because she's tough and she's fair. And apparently, uh, Reince Priebus agreed. Uh, This is a quote from him. Uh, He said, Mickelson is, quote, a proven leader who brings a track record of excellence and fair-mindedness. Now, you know, hurting all these cats, though, is what I think is going to be a real interesting challenge. As you're well aware, Enid, there is a movement afoot again to somehow change the rules, allow everybody to basically become a free agent, even if they are a pledged delegate, and to quote-unquote vote their conscience. There are uh, all kinds of conversations going on. How do you start to kind of herd these cats as we move closer and closer now to convention? Well, we've got a rules committee made up of 112 people. It's a man and woman from each state and territory. And and they all have the right to, to submit amendments. They'll be I'm sure a lot of lively debate about what's going on, but but we have a process. We'll see it through. And uh, I've I've been telling people, this isn't going to be decided on parliamentary tricks. You know, Doug, you and I have been at at state conventions where you've got people waving Robert's Rules of Order around like it's holy scripture (laughs) and trying to find out a way to, to use some kind of loophole to allow the minority view to prevail, and that's not going to happen here. Uh, so, so my job is to make sure that we have a full and fair discussion, but in the end, the delegates are the ones who decide. It, it's not just the Rules Committee. The Rules Committee puts forward a report and a suggestion, and then it's the delegates on the floor who decide whether to accept or reject those rules. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, so they'll have the final say, but my job is, is to make sure that we get through the process fairly and have something to present to the entire convention. It is interesting because changes have been made before, and sometimes for good purpose, sometimes not. I think of in 2012, the uh, the eight-state rule came yeah. forward, and uh, that was much discussed earlier in the debate when John Kasich and Ted Cruz were still uh, going for it and, and hoping that there would be some kind of anomaly, perhaps, at the convention. So it's not unprecedented that we do occasionally change things. No, that's right. What, what people don't understand usually is that the rules that, that this committee will be debating are the rules for the upcoming convention, just coming right after it, in this case about two or three days after it, but they're also the rules that govern the next nominating cycle. So these rules are set in place for the next four years. They govern which states get to go first, what the calendar for nomination is. They govern how the the RNC chairman gets appointed and and how he or she has to run and who they can appoint and, you know, who they cannot and and which committees are going to be selected by uh, members of the RNC versus the chairman. So 
all of these things are in the hands of the delegates. And that's why it's so important that, that you get it right in the rules committee and have something that the convention can feel good about adopting, because those rules are going to stay in place for the next four years. Any year, any cycle, your job would be considered quite tough. But this year, because of the times, the seasons, you look at what's happening on the Democratic side of the aisle, you look at what has been unfolding on the Republican side of the aisle, and then to have somebody, regardless of whatever anyone's opinion is of Donald Trump, he is a total, unique political animal. How difficult is that going to make your job just the anomaly of this situation? Well, Doug, I put it this way. I tell people, now maybe people will believe that I don't have any intention of running for public office in the future. (laughs) (laughs) I I, I, I can get through this, and I'm sure I'll make all sides angry. So. Have you had a chance to, to sit down at all? I know James Evans did over the weekend down in Las Vegas, I believe. He met with uh, Donald Trump talking about a little bit of the challenge coming up in, in Utah. There's kind of a, uh, they call it his Mormon problems, his Utah problems. Have you met with Donald Trump? I have not met with Donald Trump. And, and because I am also a vice chair of the convention, and that was put in place um, months ago. And so I have been very careful not to take a public position as I was working on the convention so that none of these candidates could feel that I was working either against them or on their behalf. So I have not met with Donald Trump, and I don't intend to um, until these rules are complete uh, so, so that people don't feel like, you know, this has somehow already been predetermined. Um, this process will go forward, and hopefully in the end we'll all unify and pass a rules package that people feel good about. Enid, before we let you run and get on your plane, walk us through what the timeline is again in case people just tuned in late. What what does okay. happen? How often will you meet? Well, the convention starts on July 18th. The Rules Committee currently is scheduled to meet for the, on the Thursday prior to that, and We've left Friday and Saturday open just in case we need it. Right. Sometimes these are done in a day. Um, sometimes the Rules Committee has had to meet over several days. So we've left plenty of room, but it does not start until the Thursday before the convention mm-hmm. begins. How many people on the Rules Committee, Enid? 112. Wow. From one man, one woman from each state and each territory. Right. Well, Enid, I I wish you the very best, and I can't thank you enough for being so flexible with us this morning. Have a safe flight home, and between now and the convention, I'm sure we'll be talking again, but I appreciate your help today. Glad to do it, Doug. Thank you. Enid Mickelson with us here at KSL News Radio, our former uh, congresswoman in the 2nd Congressional District.